what you're gonna need in order to corner balance your car. You must be able to change the ride height. We do not want to have too much difference between our corners. It's pretty light. Hey everyone, welcome back to today's Tip Tuesday. We're gonna talk about corner balancing. At first, if you imagine yourself sitting at a restaurant at a dining table and you're leaning on it with your friend and you find that it's leaning back and forth, it's driving you nuts. I find myself folding up a piece of paper or napkin and shoving it under that one leg that is just floating off the ground. It drives me absolutely insane. This is an example of the rule of three points of contact are always carrying the majority of the weight. So anything that has four legs, one of them is not gonna be doing much. That's why tripods and other things are often just three legs because that's all the contact that's required for an even load. Now when we apply this to corner balancing, cars are a bit different. They have dampers, they have springs, and they have coilovers with race cars. These coilovers are able to evenly distribute the weight by compressing and allowing the weight to be more evenly distributed, but there's still work to be done the corner balance is still required, meaning we need to get as much even weight on each tire as possible. The reason why this is so important is because if you imagine that one tire, let's say it's the driven wheels, they could be front or back, doesn't matter, that one of the tires has more weight than the other. That means under acceleration, you're gonna have more traction from one tire versus the other. This is gonna create something called torque steer, or in the reverse, if it's braking, it could cause some brake steer if you have more pressure on one tire versus the other under braking. And then if you apply this to drifting, it's the same thing. If you brake traction and there's more weight on the rear tire, let's say the left rear, and you brake traction to drift, the car is gonna wanna steer favorably to the right because the outside left has more weight on it and it's gonna drive the car to the right. So with that in mind, let's talk about what you're gonna need in order to corner balance your car. Typically, you are going to need a set of scales. You will need a perfectly level floor or adjustable pedestals that you can put the car on and level the pedestals. You can use a laser level or something to get all four of those the exact same, a straight edge across them and level them that way. If you don't have some kind of a laser, keep it simple, but it is one of the most critical parts of corner balancing your car because if the floor is slightly, not level, you're gonna have more weight on the downward side. You will also need adjustable coilovers or suspension. You must be able to change the ride height. That is how we add and subtract pressure from each corner. You must make sure that all the tires are at the operating pressure that you're going to be running them at. So on a drift car, typically we're running lower rear pressure, a bit higher front pressure for a road race car. You probably have it evenly set. Just make sure you have it where you plan on running it because that will make a difference in the displacement of the weight and where the weight is sitting. When you do a corner balance, make sure you disconnect your anti-roll bars. When you adjust the height of the suspension, there's often tension held up in the anti-roll bar and that is going to affect where the weight is placed. You can effectively increase the weight on corners even using the anti-roll bar with the adjustments. But when you're corner balancing the car, disconnect it, that's going to get it out of the equation. When you're doing the weight, you must have the driver in the seat or the equivalent amount of the driver sitting in the seat, evenly distributed, kind of guessing where the legs weight is and where the body sits, because that's gonna give you the best for your corner balance. It's not gonna be perfect, with the driver is going to be the best. Before you do the corner balance, try to have the car as best aligned as possible. Yes, adjusting the coilovers is going to affect the alignment slightly, but we're not adjusting the coilovers any more than 7.5 millimeters difference. This is the industry standard amount because any more than 7.5 millimeters of difference between the corners, and then you're gonna start getting into affecting the roll center, which will change the behavior of the car turning left and right. We do not want to have too much difference between our corners. The whole purpose of this is to have the left versus the right be identical. When we're corner balancing, we are not adding mass to the car. The overall weight of the car is going to stay the same. We are only changing where the weight is placed amongst the four corners. Let's get into it with an example of an Excel spreadsheet that I made. I know you guys love watching these sheets, so I made an interactive one that has the formulas built in so that we can just key in the numbers that we have and then you can see the percentages go to where they're supposed to. This could be another sheet that we add as a download. Our wheel speed chart has actually had 35 or 40 downloads on our website. It's a great thing for the community to have access to something that is proper information. Let's look at this chart and see what we can come up with. So looking at the screen here, I have our before corner balance values. We're just going to assume that this is with the driver 
these values I punched in just for demonstration purposes. So on the left front, we have 910 pounds, and on the right front, we have 790 pounds, giving us a total of 1,700. That is a 52.47% front weight. Our total weight here is at the bottom at 3240. We have the left side being 52.47% and we have the right side 47.53. The left rear is 790 and the right rear is 750, giving us a rear bias of 47.53%. And then you look at what's most important is our cross weight. That is 51.23%. What we want to get is 50%. So how do we interpret what these values really mean? So we have a front bias car. This is probably a front engine car, maybe with a rear rad setup and the battery in the back and whatnot. The transmission and engine and everything in the front are making it front biased. This is perfectly fine. On a drift car, I've often said that 53% with a good tire is the best. You're gonna have good front grip. The car is gonna rotate around the proper areas of the car and it's gonna be easy to drive. So let's get into how we can begin to manipulate this in order to get what we want over here, which is 50% and then we wanna more evenly distribute the left to right. This is only gonna be doable to a certain extent left to right because we have a driver sitting on the left side. So that is going to be difficult to get all of that weight over to the right, but we can effectively tune in our cross weight may not evenly be left and right being 50%, but our cross weight, meaning the left front and the right rear and the right front and the left rear equal the same amount. This is important because this is what's going to give us equal feeling turning left and turning right. And the car is gonna behave very similarly when the center of gravity in the car and all the weight transfer is rotating and turning it's going to feel as good as it can by having the cross weight being the same. If we key in and we make these adjustments, I'm not gonna go into specifically how much we would have adjusted to get these values, but if I key in some information here, on our before and then on our after, I've made some changes that's given us a cross weight of 50.15%. We have changed our left to our right to 51.85 and 48. I think this is probably the best that you'd be able to achieve with a left-hand drive driver. And then for our front to rear bias, we're still similar at 52.3. This one was 52.47, but the most important figure is our cross weight. We were able to see 50.15% cross weight giving us the best feeling left to right. Yes, you can see that the front left is heavy at 80, 880 pounds and 800 pounds and then the right is much lighter at 815 and 745. But by increasing the different heights of each corner, we were able to manipulate where the weight is going. And in the same format, we were able to change the table's teetering by folding up a napkin and shoving it under one of the legs. Effectively by doing that, we are increasing the height of that table's coilover and putting more weight on that leg to reduce weight on the others and more evenly distribute the four points of contact. So this would be a good example of getting the best case scenario out of your car. If you were going to get it perfectly even all the way around, you would need to plan that out ahead of time. And we did that using our Corvette. We definitely put a lot of the components like the battery, like the fuel, like the expansion tank. The rad is, is in the rear center to get our front and rear bias even. We did offset a lot of the components in order to get a close 50-50 weight distribution. My Corvette specifically is 53% front weight. We are running a very good tire, so I did not want to have a 50-50 because that is understeer prone and it's going to push the front. That's too much. This is just a Tip Tuesday, so let's go out and weigh the wagon. That's what you guys have been waiting for. And we're going to see what that car comes in at. And we could even key in those figures into this chart and determine what we would need to do to corner balance the wagon properly. Of course, with me sitting in the driver's seat, that's what we're gonna be accounting for. Let's see what this car weighs. Right front. My phone started jumping, what a day. For the God I need it, now I can't afford to wait. I just had a fan hit me up from Kuwait. Okay, lower it down, and we're gonna roll it onto the scale. Same one try to hit me for the race. Got a man that rolling with a play. Okay, hold it there. Okay, now I'm gonna sit in it and then we're gonna see what the car is. 
is 3173. Suspension has settled. Wheels are rolling. We're heavy on the left side. That's to be expected. Uh, we're going to throw a couple passengers in it to see what we'll be weighing when this thing's fully loaded. Jack, give it a little roll just to settle the suspension. Yeah, 3681 with all the boys. It's not bad. I mean, it's a lot, but it's not bad. It's pretty light. He's got to turn the boost up a little more. It's actually going to eat. Yeah, two PSI per body. Yeah. That needs to be a button. How many passengers you got? Four. Equal maps on oh, the PC. <laughs> Fully yeah. loaded, couple thickies. It's extremely rear heavy right now. Let's go. Like extremely. What's the weight? Is like with you in it, is it 50-50 close? Pretty close to 50-50. It's probably because of how far back the rat is, the stock fuel tank, the battery, and it's very far beyond the rear axle. And then the front wheels are positioned quite far forward, which means that allows the weight in the middle of the car to evenly distribute between the four points of contact. So we'll plug this into my little worksheet and we'll see what uh, the cross weight is and if there's any adjustments required. But that is basically it for this video. We'll show you what this is keyed in with people and without. And then beyond that, thank you guys for watching and we will see you guys on the next Tip Tuesday or whatever shop video we have coming up.